A good day. Uh, today we're going to show another case of uh, complete endoscopic sinus surgery. In this case, it's a left side. And this case had a, a patient with a diffuse uh, chronic rhinosinusitis bilateral by defect. And, and he has a few polyps that uh, we treated with, with uh, oral corticosteroids. Uh, prior to surgery. Uh, a week before, he started uh, systemic corticosteroids just to get a better, a better state of the, of the disease before surgery. So it bleeds less and, and we can show a better understanding of the anatomy. Uh, we're exploring now and we can see that the, that the patient has a very prominent uncinate process. Uh, we're exploring a little bit and as you can see there, uh, just uh, below this uh, big uh, uncinate process, uh, you can see the, the bulla, that it's a little bit hidden. You can see here, down there, just behind the uncinate process, that we're going to find the bulla. Okay, as, as we always do, we will, try, we will try to address the frontal sinus and the frontal recess with an intact bulla technique. So to do that, uh, first we have to remove the uncinate process carefully not to damage the other structures because uh, we try to avoid bleeding. If you, if you go through step-by-step -step procedure and removing the, the bone, bony structures trying to not damage a lot of the mucosa, you will, you will find that your surgeries are a little bit uh, less with a less, less bleeding pro problems. So it's an easier surgery and, and fast as well. As you can see a lot of all the structures so you will be able to, to be more secure about what you're doing. Uh, in this case, I decided just not to, not to edit it a lot. So you will see a lot of processes that, that I just remove all the parts where the patient, uh, where we just cleaned the optic and the, and the endoscope, but the rest of it is almost unedited. The complete uh, su surgery was about 25 to 30 minutes and, and as you can see here after removing the, 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 the using the process we're using the debrider. I use a lot of, of, of the debrider just to remove all the, the redundant mucosa and the inflamed mucosa. You can see here that's almost a polypoid kind type of mucosa that, that we have to remove it just to, in order to see the bone. You remember that sinus surgery is not about uh, treating the mucosa inflammation, but to uh, remove the bone and just to, to expose and open a single sinus cavity in order to allow the, the, the nasal, the intranasal corticosteroids to arrive where they're supposed to arrive, that is inside the sinuses. So the objective, again, as I explained in a lot of other, other videos, is to obtain a single sinus cavity just to uh, uh, allow the, the corticosteroids to arrive. Here you can see the bulla, some of the suprabullar um, uh, cells. Uh, somewhere there you will find the, the, the frontal recess. And as you can see here, there's, if we expose with the debrider, we expose the, the ascending process or the frontal process of the maxillary bone that if you expose it uh, and you see the bone, you have, you have a clear view of what you have to remove, as I'm doing here with the carries and forceps, to remove just to uh, be able to address where using, we're opening here the, to open the agar nasi cell and to address and get a, a view with, to the frontal moidal cells. And hence the frontal recess, because we to, to engage the frontal recess we have to remove part, most of the part of the frontal moid blood cells just to get to see the frontal recess and the frontal and the enter of the frontal sinus. Remember that the, the intact bulla technique consists, and if you maintain the bulla, uh, what is in all that is anterior to the bulla, you know is a safe place because it's, it's not um, it's not skull base, but it's frontal recess. Here, what you're seeing is the inferior part of the of the uncinate process that articulates with the inferior turbinate. To open uh, a maxillary, the maxillary sinus, the ostium of the maxillary sinus, you have to remove this bone 
in order to get a big uh, big access to the um, to the uh, maxillary sinus. Remember that the posterior uh, wall of the maxillary sinus it's a very important landmark because it's one of the landmarks that doesn't change through your surgery, and you will use it to find a lot of structures. And if you have uh, a correct view, a constant view of the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus, you will have a constant landmark to see where you are all the time. I like to open the, the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus as a landmark, and also another landmark that I like to get exposed just to, 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 get to see it all the time is the posterior table of the frontal sinus. If you open, if you do, if you get take or take all the frontal nodal cells and you expose the the lamina papyracea and and you open a draft two A to the frontal sinus, you will see the posterior table of the frontal sinus all the time, and you can use it as a constant landmark as well to to avoid getting lost in the where your your uh, skull base is. As I said before, we have the bulla here, so we have superior and anterior to the bulla. We have some uh, frontal cells that we have to address and to remove in order to get access to the to the frontal recess. Remember that if you don't get remove these cells, you won't get never you won't get access to a correct uh, address address of the frontal recess, and you won't see it clearly. So you have to remove this. And the safest way to remove all these cells is to uh, actually maintain the bulla so you will know that the landmark of the bulla will be uh, where the skull base is because the bulla always attaches to the anterior part of the uh, remember that the face of the bulla is the anterior limit of the anterior admoidal complex and the anterior admoidal complex is the one that is protecting you if you don't remove the bulla you know enter the anterior admoidal complex you are you know that the, that the anterior admoidal complex and the bulla is protecting you for lateral, the orbit, and superiorly, this anterior skull base. Still, uh, didn't eliminate all the all the all, all the scenes where we're just um, cleaning the object. But you can see here that removing these cells and using the debrider to remove the the. The, the, the redundant mucosa or the, the, the inflammatory mucosa, you see that we're entering correctly the, the frontal recess. We can see here the opening, the natural ostium of the frontal sinus. In this case, it wasn't that hard to, to find. Uh, we have a, a, a good, a good, a big uh, frontal recess, but you can see here that we just remove the frontal moidal cells. We haven't drilled anything. We haven't. Uh, we have to take a little bit of bone from the, from from the ascending process of the maxillary bone here, but just to see the the recess with the zero degree angle scope. Uh, but we haven't drilled a lot, and we took a little bit of bites with the carrison forceps of the process. But still, uh, that's all mostly what is needed to remove the. Uh, to remove the cells and open, get a good view of the frontal recess, of the frontal sinus. Now we have located two important landmarks, as I said before, the posterior table of the frontal sinus. Then you know that there is a change, when there is a change of, of, of direction of the, of the bone, you will know where your anterior modal artery should be and where the scalp should be. And of course, you have also the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus that also uh, serves you very well as a constant landmark. Uh, you can see there we have our first uh, opening uh, done. We ha you have opened the frontal sinus, you have opened the maxillary sinus, and then we're going to open the bulla and enter the anterior small complex. What I do here normally is that I use a two or three bites to open the anterior wall of the bulla. I use it to do it uh, in the most medial and inferior part that you know that's the safe place to open the bulla. And after that, I enter with the debrider uh, again, as I said, to remove all the mucosa. 
I will continue saying that. Remember that the dissection, the sign of surgery, is a bone surgery. What you have, what you're aiming to look for, is the is the bone that you have to remove to uh, advance and to address. This is um, what is called the uh, uh, systematic front-to-back approach to the frontal sinuses. And, and as well, you see here that there, you, you take out the mucosa, that usually the mucosa always uh, confuses where you are, and you have to expose the bone. The bone will never uh, lie to you where you are, but you can get a lot of confused if you, if you believe that the inflamed mucosa is part of the dissection. So rem remember, and when you're confused, you, know where you, you don't know where you are, you just have to remove the mucosa in order to expose the bone, in order to know where you are. You can see here, we're removing also the mucosa, as I said before, we're just trying to expose the bone, and exposing the bone, it's the best way to know uh, where to advance. Here I believe that we're just opened the most of the ethmoidal cells, uh, and you and in the, in the in the bottom of the image here, you can see that there's uh, I believe there's the, the the third lamella that is the basal lamella of the middle turbinate, the the descending process that it's mostly at the level of the posterior wall of the um, of the maxillary sinus. You know that that's the limit between the anterior uh, and model complex and the posterior and model complex. Remember that the anterior and model complex has a lot of uh, cells, like I mean, between eight or ten cells that are small cells. But the posterior and model complex it has like between three to five cells, and the cells are bigger. So remember that when you open the vasal lamella of the middle turbinate, they believe that it's the the structure that we're peeling the, with the mucosa right there to uh, enable ourselves to enter the posterior ethmoid. And you can see here that the basal lamella is mostly at the limit with the, um, with the posterior wall of the um, uh, maxillary sinus. We're just removing all the bone, just to know, all the mucosa, I mean, just in order to know exactly where we are. And we're going to enter now, uh, or preparing ourselves to enter to the posterior ethmoid. Usually, if you enter, at the same point, inferiorly, uh, and just in that place, inferior to the, you know that it's the safest place to enter the ethmo posterior ethmoid. This is the first ethmoidal cell, uh, posterior ethmoidal cell. You can see there that's a big cell, and it's a bigger cell than this, that the that the anterior cells. And it's usually it's very it's usually it's it's very easy to confuse this cell with this phenoid, because you know you're very very posterior right now and you can see here that you have the change of the of 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 the of the direction of the skull base and i believe that we have addressed the 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 this 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 posterior middle cell and you can see there inside in the superior part of the cell this skull base we're going to clean up again all the try to remove a little bit of bone chips and then again the mucosa, the redundant mucosa and you can also remove with the brighter small uh, tips of bone that can be bothering you to advance or to see behind it and this is the posterior as I said before the posterior model cell and usually with this first posterior model cell you will have one cell that is uh, behind the eye it would be like in here in the direction would be like on a little bit superior and to the right. But the idea here is to complete the, the, the sinus surgery to addressing the um, this phenol sinus through the posterior ethmoid. How we do that? You know that the that the posterior that the sphenoid sinus is uh, the direction of the phenol sinus from here is inferior and medially. So what we're going to say to do now is to palpate a little bit in the posterior ethmoid to the inferior and medially and you can see here that we have entered now we are sure because this that's the direction where we are supposed to be the sphenoid sinus we are going to enter the sphenoid sinus if you're in the sphenoid and you go in that direction with a with a dissector or with a suction uh, you will not be able to progress because you will find the clibus, the clibus right there. But if you're if you're in this cell, in the posterior cell, and you go in that direction and you find the the the, 
the small resistance and you're able to enter in that direction, you know that what you're entering there, that cell, is the sphenoid sinus. And the idea of that is to enter to address this in this manner. You also you always can of of course be sure of where you're doing if you enter medially to the middle terminate and to find the um, natural ostium of the of this phenoid sinus. But still we're pretty sure that we're there and we can we'll try to see it afterwards and we try to remove this little bit of bone and you know that we are in the sphenoid sinus and you're opening it and you open through the um, posterior ethmoid so you are trying to create this single sinus cavity that the idea is that the corticosteroids can go like in this highway through the entrance of the nostril to the uh, sphenoid sinus and it can arrive to all the sinuses as you can see there it's a, like a like a like a straight way for the uh, spray to address the frontal sinus, the maxillary sinus, the anterior edmoid, the posterior edmoid, and the sphenoid, just in the same straight line. And there it is. So we opened all the all the sinuses, and as I believe, the idea is exactly that. So well. It's a little bit long this video, but it's unedited, unedited most of it. So the idea is to get an idea of what what you're doing is 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 that is opening all the sinus um, as, and creating this single sinus cavity that will almost address a lot of, of, of patients. This patient actually uh, they're most most grateful patients. This there's not twenty two um, score usually goes very 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 low so it, it, it it's it 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 goes uh better patients feel feel better and it ventilates a lot and with the corticosteroids patients are very in a in a very good shape at least in the first of first two years in these cases it's not a uh eosinophilic a chronic rhinosinusitis the the prognostic is good just with this surgery and some uh, intranasal corticosteroids. Uh, perfect. Uh, thanks for watching, all of you, and see you in the next video. Bye.